You know, there's really only two times I use a non-stick skillet when I'm cooking. One is when I'm making omelets, or eggs, or fish. Tilapia, high protein, very little fat, many applications, delicious. Today we're making a Florentine tilapia. Whenever you hear the word Florentine, you're gonna know it's gonna be bagged spinach. So, let's get started by dicing up our tomato. Tomatoes are good, there's only two things bad. The stem, which we're gonna get rid of, and on the inside you have the seeds and the juice. The seeds are bitter and the juice will wash all the flavor out of your recipe, so let's get rid of the juice and seeds. To do this, we're gonna use the greatest tools in your kitchen, your fingers. Simply take your fingers, rub them into the tomato, push them out the seeds and the juice, and any of this white pith on the inside that has no flavor whatsoever. And the slice, I don't care if you're using a samurai sword, you want to make sure that the outer skin or shiny side of your tomato, like a bell pepper, is always facing in the down position. Of course, we're going to use the rolling chop on this, and you want to use the pinch grip. Grab your knife with your finger, index finger and thumb, bring the rest of your fingers down. We're going to use the edge of the blade as a rolling pivoting mechanism. Keep your fingers out of the way, and we'll just come in, make some nice slices. And we'll turn these, which this is a julienne cut, to make a nice dice. Now the recipe calls for wine, which is really important when you're cooking fish, because the wine will actually neutralize the fish oils. Now if you're like me and you don't want to really open a bottle and then have a whole bottle left when you're done uh, after your dish, get a bottle of vermouth and leave it on your countertop. It'll last for at least a good month. You can use it for cooking. It's inexpensive and comes in quite handy. Now, don't forget, you want to get that pan good and hot first, at least for about a good minute or two. Never saute in a cold pan. And in the meantime, we're going to hit our tilapia with a little bit of kosher salt here, some fresh cracked pepper. We're going to do both sides so both sides taste good. And then we're ready to cook. Let's go ahead and get some oil in the pan. Swirl the coat. Oil isn't just for flavor and non-stick, kind of help the cooking process because it brings that heat up into the product. And we'll add our tilapia filet. We'll put them in the pan. And remember, when you put them in the pan, don't touch them. Let them sit there for at least a good minute to get some bronzing and color. They won't stick that way. And you get some great flavor on them. And we'll use a spatula to gently break them loose from the pan. And we'll give them a turn. That's some nice color right there. That's what we're looking for. Good flavoring on there. Tilapia cooks really quick and they have a built-in timer. When you see these little mini Grand Canyons opening up here, it's ready. And we're gonna place these on our serving plate right in the middle. And we'll make our sauce. To do that, let's add some more olive oil to the pan. We'll add our diced tomatoes and our garlic. Now, instead of dicing up garlic and having half to go bad from sitting around not doing anything, I like to squeeze garlic. It's really convenient and easy to use, and it lasts in the fridge for about a good two months. Now, when you're doing a saute, if you like to kind of show off and flip up the stuff in the pan, uh, that's really easily done. P people get the wrong concept about flipping stuff up in the pan. They think the pan needs to be going in an up and down motion. Actually, in reality, the pan's really going more forward and backwards by moving the pan forward and jerking it back, you're using the natural contour of the pan to have the, the product slosh up against there and naturally flip back. The actual flipping is done at the very end of the flip or at the wrist action. So we're moving forward fast, jerking back fast, and letting this contour do all the work. Now it's important not to overcook your tomatoes for really more than one minute because you're gonna lose all their flavor and color. Let's go ahead and add some wine to the pan. And we'll bring it back to a simmer. Now we're gonna cook the wine down for about two minutes to reduce it and concentrate those flavors before we add our nice handful here of the bag spinach. It's been pre-washed and it will wilt pretty quickly here. Just a matter of a few seconds. And again, it's not in the recipe, but a half a pat of butter doesn't hurt anybody. Boy, it really smells good. Let's add a little touch of salt and we'll serve it up.